and welcome to another PAT Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford. And today we're going to be taking a look at question number seven from the 2011 PAT paper. So let's take a look. So here in this question, we are given a polynomial here and we are told that this quadratic equation here is a factor of this polynomial. And we want to find all of the roots of this polynomial. OK, so I'm just going to put brackets around this so I can see what each of the equations look like more easily. OK, so this polynomial that we're given, we can see that the highest power of x is x to the 4. So this means that we're going to be finding four roots to this equation. And we are told that this quadratic here is a factor. So we know that we can find two roots by simply finding the factors for this factor here. But we still need to find the other two. So we need to figure out what we can multiply this quadratic by in order to get us to this final polynomial. So we can deduce that in order to get x to the 4 here, we're going to have to have another quadratic equation to multiply this quadratic factor here. So we're going to have x to the power 2 multiplied by x to the power of 2 to get this x to the 4 here. So what we can do to fully factorise this polynomial here is we can write this first factor in brackets. And rather than trying to sit here and try and puzzle out what uh, we could multiply this by in order to get this polynomial here, we could substitute in a generic quadratic here, multiply it out and compare the coefficients to see what the coefficients of the second factor need to be. So I'm going to write out here a generic quadratic, so it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. And I'm going to multiply out these two brackets here. So let's start with all things multiplied by this first term here. So we have ax to the 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared. So this is just the way I keep track of multiplying out brackets like this. You might do it slightly differently. OK, so I'm looking at the second term here. We've got a minus ax cubed minus bx squared minus cx. And then finally, multiplying by the minus 6, we have minus 6ax squared, getting to the edge of my paper, minus 6bx minus 6c. OK, so let's group this all together. So we have a single x to the 4 term, so I'm just going to write that down here, ax to the 4 plus, so let's look at our x cubed terms. So we have a plus bx cubed here, a minus ax cubed, there. And that's it for the x cubed. So let's group those together. So we have a b minus a x cubed. Let's do the same for the x squared. So we have a plus c x squared here, minus b x squared here, and a minus 6 a x squared here. So let's group those together. So what did we have? We have a c minus b minus 6 a x squared. And then the x terms, where well, we have a minus c here and a minus 6b here. So I'm still going to put a plus sign here, but then I'll put the minuses in brackets here. So minus c minus 6b x. And then the constant at the end here, we have a minus 6c. OK. So just to show that we've expanded each of the lines above here. So this is what we're left with. And we know that this algebraic term, uh, algebraic polynomial here, has to be the same as this one that we're given in the question. So we can compare our coefficients. So let's start with the highest power. So let's look at the x to the power 4 terms. Well, comparing here, we have an a, which must be equal to the 1 here. So we found our first coefficient here. So we know that a must equal 1. Looking at the next lowest power, let's do the same for the x cubed. So we have a b minus a here, and that's got to be equal to 4. Now we know that a equals 1, so let's put that in. So we have b minus 1 equals 4, which means that we have b equals 5. 
And let's do the same for the x squared. I'm going to go here so we can still see both the equations on camera here. So we have that c minus b minus 6a is equal to this term here is equal to minus 17. Okay, so let's substitute in the coefficients that we found. So c minus 5 minus 6 times 1 is 6 equals minus 17. So that's c minus 11 equals minus 17. So we know that c must equal minus 6 here. And we found our three coefficients, but it's always good to double check. So let's double check by calculating the uh, x coefficient here. So, so to check, let's do the x coefficient here, which was minus c minus 6b. So let's substitute those values in. So minus c is 6, minus 6 times b, which is 5. So that's 6 minus 30, which is equal to minus 24. And let's have a look back up here. Yep, that's correct. That is correct. And let's do the constant as well, just to double check. So we have a minus 6c, which is minus 6 times minus 6. Substituting this in here, which is equal to 36. And yes, that is correct. Brilliant. So we've now factorised this fourth order polynomial into two quadratics. So let's write that out here. So we have the first one that was given to us, the x squared minus x minus 6. And now we have the coefficients for the second one here, which is x squared plus 5x minus 6 here. OK. And to factorise it, we are told that this equals 0. So let's write this down here. And now we've had lots of practice, I'm sure, of factorising quadratics. But even so, let's just write that out in full here. So let's look at the first one here first. So we have, so we know it's going to have to have an x in each bracket to get that singular x squared at the start there. And we know that the, uh, the terms here have to multiply together to get this number. And the difference between them has to, or the sum, has to be equal to the coefficient here. So let's have a look. So I think that that's going to be, we're going to have a minus 3 and a plus 2 here to get the, uh, the correct quadratic here. And you can multiply that out and double check it. You might have a different way of factorising quadratics. Again, that is fine. This is just the way I do it, sort of eyeballing it a bit. And then we can do the same over here. Again, we're going to have an x in each bracket. And again, they've got to multiply to make this factor and sum to make this one. And again, we're going to have one plus and one minus to get the minus sign here. And I think we are going to have a plus six and a minus one to get this one. That looks right to me. And again, that equals zero. So obviously, to find the roots of this polynomial here, we set each of these brackets to zero. So from this one, we have, uh, so the roots would be, from this bracket, we have that x equals 3. So we set this to 0. From this one, we have that x equals minus 2. Again, setting this to 0. This one, x equals minus 6. And from this one, we have that x equals 1. So those are the four roots of this fourth order polynomial equation here. And to do that, we've factorised using the quadratic that was given in the equation to find all of the roots. So I hope that was helpful. That's just one way of solving this, uh, this question. You might have another way. You might go about it slightly differently. That's fine. But still, I hope it was helpful. And I hope you will join us next week where Catherine will be taking us through another pat problem.